Hi, everybody. I'm Zilla Blitz, and welcome back to day five in our adventures driving from Key West, Florida, all the way up to Alaska. Take a look at our route here. Today, we've got the, the rest of our bulldozer run here, going from Glendive, Montana, up to Lethbridge or Lethbridge, perhaps, in Canada. Most of our trip is going to be across the northern edge of Montana. Uh, in our previous episode, we started with this load down in Pittsburgh, Kansas, made our way up through South Dakota, Iowa, uh, North Dakota, then across North Dakota, just crossing into the Montana border. We finished our fourth day. This is day five. We've just slept and woken up. Now it's three-ish a little bit in the afternoon. We've got uh, plenty of sleep and plenty of gas. So we should be out making our way across Montana here. Let's see how this goes. By the way, just for those people keeping track here, um, we do have a perfect delivery on this one so far. We have yet to hit anything or rack up any damage. Knock on wood. Usually when I say that, that about jinxes it and ends the whole thing here. But we'll see how this goes. So um, we've got a couple hours before daylight, I think. And now we're back in, of course, we're back into uh, regular game content here. So we've gone from the, is that a coyote or something over there? Is that a dog? A wolf? Uh, we've gone from uh, Coast to Coast mod where we spent most of the time in North Dakota and South Dakota in the last episode doing that and now we are back in official uh, cell, uh, SCS software kind of content here so yeah looking forward to this I haven't driven across I've been driven to Montana for a while here this will probably a, be a slower trip than it was across North, North, across North Dakota where it was pretty much just straight highway we could go 75 miles an hour almost the whole way that's the I wish you could drive across North Dakota that fast in real life because it is a long haul but we're right out on the highway now here and we should start making our way across uh, hopefully we'll see sunlight in a couple hours and grab some breakfast and stuff like that. Um, we'll check in shortly. I'm not quite sure yet if we can make it the whole way there. I think we, we have 12 hours and 47 minutes until we get there. Yeah, we're probably going to have to sleep before we get there because I didn't see any places to sleep up in Canada once we get in there until we get to like Calgary and stuff like that. But we'll see how all that plays out. we got a long ways to go first here. Whoops, we're getting off here already. Okay, that was quick. So anyway, we'll see it a little bit as we make our way across Montana here. Got a little over an hour and a half into our journey now. We're cutting uh, north and then going to cut west across Montana here. We can see the, uh, the sun coming up here on the horizon. Looks like a cloudless, beautiful day in big sky country now. And uh, I, I did have a story for us. It was interesting. So I was out driving. This is not related to Montana, but it's just related to trucks. Um, I was out driving today and I was uh, just kind of making my way across the town and, and in front of me, uh, coming out of a parking lot was a trailer truck and it was a kind of a, a regular cab with a flatbed trailer and had some kind of a con small construction vehicle on it so most of the trailer was empty it actually didn't really contain that much on it but it was pulling out in front of me and as I came up to the stop sign this truck was pulling out and the first thing I saw when I saw it is that dude you got to swing that turn wider he didn't and it, we just got six inches of snow by the way so there and there wasn't any snow on the roads but there was snow off to the sides of the road and stuff like that but um, you know, I'm seeing him pull out and they take the way he's taking the corner. It's like, you got to take that corner better. It's like it was too, he, he didn't, he didn't swing it wide, right? He just kind of, whoops, I'm speeding here. We're going to skip that. We got, we're on a mission here. Sorry, I'm kind of talking and, and not paying attention to where I'm going here. But now we got to slow again. Okay, lots of things to think about here. So anyway, back to the story at hand. You know, it's immediately apparent. It's like he's cutting it. He's not doing the turn right. It was like, and I didn't have to think of it. It was just like so automatic. And sure enough, as he cut off, he like he went up on the snowbank and he kind of cut the back end of the trailer all the way through the, the, the snowbank and the, the trailer back wheels went like right over the sidewalk and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I could tell you that, you know. And then a little bit later, he was driving. I was behind him, right, because he was going kind of slow and up and he came up to another intersection. I was going to go straight. He's going to turn right. Um, and as he did the same thing, he came up to the intersection. It's like there's a lot of cars. Here. I'm like, man, you really you got to swing out and take that other lane because the two lanes go into his right, the lane he was turning into. It's like, you gotta swing out. It's like, as soon as he started doing it, I'm like, you cut that too soon and you didn't go far enough out. You had the, the green light so you could make this turn without any problems. And sure enough, the, the right wheels of the trailer just bounced up over the, the sidewalk a little bit. I mean, he didn't destroy anything. He didn't hit anything. It was just snow and stuff like that. But it was really funny. It's like, without even thinking, I was thinking, oh my gosh, you, you gotta take those turns better. It's like, it makes me wonder, I mean, Okay, watching someone drive a truck and then actually driving a real truck, I get it. It's a lot different than driving a truck in a game. But I do think there is some overlap, at least in terms of what you're trying to do when you're driving a truck, you know, taking corners wide. And after you do it just long enough in this game, you kind of have a rough idea for at least 
what you should be doing if you were to drive a truck in real life. So it was just funny when I thought I saw that. It's like instantly, automatic, without even thinking about it. Like that's not the right way to take that corner. And, and sure enough, he went up on the curb. But I do wonder, it makes me wonder, I've talked about it before, but it makes me wonder. And I know they have these in England, but I couldn't find any place that does it in the United States. Um, I know they have places where, like in England, you can do, you can drive a trailer truck and stuff like that. It's like you pay like 200, 300 pounds or something like that. And you get to actually drive an actual truck. Because here in the United States, I was looking for it. I couldn't see any place that offered it like that. Um, so, and I, I think it's probably stricter licensing requirements or something like that, that I don't think, in a, maybe insurance or something, I'm not really sure. But anyway, I couldn't find a place in the United States that offered it, but there were places in England that did it. It would be co cool to actually drive a real cool. truck and try it. Just see like how much transfer is there, excuse me, between American Truck Simulator and a real truck. So, and not that I, I'm a perfect driver in American Truck Simulator either, of course, but it would be fun to try to try someday. You know? Please watch the speed. But anyway, we are making our way now, kind of zipping through some of these smaller towns in, in Montana. Oh. It's amazing how different the regular game content is from the uh, Coast to Coast mod too, because Coast to Coast mod is literally, I mean, you're just going interstate highway. Like that, those four lanes in South Dakota were massive, where here and now we got like the little small towns popping up and slowing down and stuff. And, uh, but sun's rising here in Montana. We're making our way across and uh, we'll see in a little while as we get further down the road. Another couple hours of the journey done here and we're just kind of, these are just uh, all uh, single lane highways here, sharing the road, going two directions, cutting across the, the northern chunk of Montana here. Really pretty drive. It's, the weather is, uh, it's gotten better now. Uh, it was uh, overcast. It looked like it was going to rain. So some clouds rolled in and then it, it, it cleared up. So it looks like we're going to have a a nice day here. It's still only eight o'clock in the morning. We've already got uh, over four hours uh, under our belt here, almost five hours of driving now. So getting up at three o'clock in the morning, you get a lot done in a day. You should try that in real life too. But I did want to comment a little bit on South Dakota and North Dakota. Some people mentioned talking about it a little bit in the comments, how they felt like it didn't quite look um, realistic. And I would say that that was a, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew I should have slowed down faster. Speeding ticket. Ah, oh, 780 bucks. I knew it. I was like, oh, I'm going way too fast. I got to slow down faster. And sure enough, I didn't slow down fast enough. Those speed limit changes get you all the time, get me all the time in that game. You know, you're coming into a small town, you're going 65, or the toll booths too, where you change and you just can't, you, you slow down. But if you're going down, if it's like 40, 35 mile an hour speed limit and you're going 45 and you're slowing down, they still give you the ticket. Busted. Oh, we had a perfect delivery up until now, too. I think that's nine things, nine incidents. So we really have to be perfect the rest of the way, which yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I was doing so well paying attention to the speed limits, and then I just started talking. It's kind of your fault. I'm just kidding, of course. But yeah, we're doing so well. I was going to be so excited if we made this 30-hour journey with, with a perfect, perfect record. But 22 and a half hours in, we get busted for speeding in Montana. Is there a cop behind us or something? can't see that way but um, anyway go back to it yes to go back to uh, North Dakota and South Dakota and I've not um, driven that section of the, the United States I've driven across South Dakota um, and I've never driven across the North Dakota part straight across North Dakota but I've heard it's fairly but it just South Dakota that stretch where you got like the four-lane highway going in both directions uh, just massive straight with four, it's, I don't think it's really like that and the the kind of the open spaces with the trees off to the side, it just, it looked like it had been thrown together pretty quickly. So that was probably the least, um, I would say the least realistic or at least, it didn't feel like a real place, right? It felt like connecting two zones there and stuff like that, which is, which is fine. No, I'm not criticizing the mod, it's just an observation here. I'm just gonna slow down again, don't give me another ticket. Um, not criticizing the mod, it's just because it's obviously, they, it was designed as a framework for other people to come in and build more areas on. Uh, but that was probably the the most generic, quickest area I think we've seen in the game. So quickest in terms of probably the easiest to make. I mean, they're just trees way off in the distance and just open road for a long way of it there too. North Dakota too had some scenery kind of placed around, but it it didn't look the same as like when we were down in Arkansas and stuff like that, which I actually, th actually thought looked pretty good. And some of the cities in like even Louisiana and stuff like that, I thought those looked pretty good. We made a traffic light. We're doing really well with traffic lights today. I think we've stopped at two out of five. 
This could be three. This could be two out of six. We're four for six on making them. We could get through this city without stopping at a traffic light. That would be awesome. I'm pushing the speed limit though. I don't want to get a ticket here either. Nice. Oh, we just made that one. These traffic lights can take a long time too. I have the traffic light mod on, which makes them be red and green longer, which is good because in the regular game, they're so short that sometimes you can't get through them if you're in a line of cars and stuff like that. Um, so I do like that mod, but boy, if you get caught by a light, it's like one or two minutes. It's kind of like real life. So anyway, we're through. Now, help me out here. I forgot. When I was here, I think I called this town. It's H-A-V-R. I think I called it Harv, but I think it's Haver, isn't it? I, I think it, I did it like the, I thought it was like Brett Favre, the Green Bay quarterback who's now retired and stuff like that. But um, I think someone corrected me and said, it's not Harv, it's Haver. I probably get that wrong too. I should look it up, but I'm driving right now. So anyway, uh, seven hours to go. We are approaching the halfway mark in our journey now. One ticket bypassed the way station. Small favors there after you've just extracted a $780 fine from me. Oops. We do not want to go left there. Is that a red light? No, it's just yellow. Okay. A little bit of awkward driving there, but we made it. Anyway, we'll uh, check in a little bit further. We're going to have to do some math for the sleeping. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out because there's no place to sleep in our delivery. The next place to sleep after we leave Montana is up in Calgary. And I don't think we can make it there. But I think we're going to have still like five or six hours of energy left before we have to leave Montana, where our last sleeping spot would be. So I have to think about it as we get closer here. Anyway, uh, big problems for us to solve later here. Beautiful day now again in Montana here as we've been chatting. We'll see you in a little while. So over halfway, about five hours and 27 minutes left, we're going to have to sleep at this upcoming rest area, which is just down the road here uh, because it's we can make it to our destination lethbridge but um once we get there there isn't a place to sleep and we wouldn't be able to make it to calgary after that so unfortunately uh, we do have to sleep here if we don't want to avoid uh, kind of exhaustion catastrophes and things like that that is going to throw off our sleep schedule though because it's going to mean we're going to be waking up at uh, well we'll wake up probably midnight or so a little bit after that two in the morning so we'll be driving in the dark a little bit that's going to kind of Screw up that, but we I do think we're gonna be on time. We have about 28 hours left to make this delivery, so we really haven't wasted uh, much time at all here. Here's our little rest area that we're gonna pull into right now. And I think we can just sleep anywhere in here, right? Probably, probably right here. Yeah, so we'll go to sleep here at four o'clock. It's the best, it's 11 o'clock in the morning, right? Ah, oh, man, yeah, that's a bummer. We're gonna wake up, at, it's gonna be midnight. We're gonna be driving in the dark, but there's nothing we can do really. Day six starts. Well, it's still kind of day five, right? Because it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a night, nine o'clock at night on the same day here. Uh, that means we're going to arrive about, what, midnight or so? Since we're here, I do think I might as well get gas because we don't really need it. This tank is so big. But since we're here and it's so easy to add on, let's just grab some gas and then head out. So we'll grab some gas and then head onto the road, a little bit of night driving. We haven't done too much actually in this in this adventure so far, at least on the recording part, because most of the time we've been sleeping, we've timed it pretty well. But unfortunately, no place to sleep in Lethbridge, Canada. People were talking about, I know there's a couple of comments and I, I kind of, I get the point too. Um, it is something I was kind of thinking about. Um, the, you know, we upgraded this truck to a sleeper cab. And one of the nice things about a sleeper cab, of course, if you're a truck driver, is that you can you can sleep <laughs> in your sleeper cab. Uh, but you really can't do that in the game. There's no advantages to the, the sleeper cab whatsoever. It's just basically there. And the places to sleep are somewhat restricted. Like, it's, it's really hard to imagine you couldn't go to a town in Canada and get a place to sleep, right? I mean, this, our newbie's all messed up here. I gotta fix this up. It doesn't look like it. Oh, give me one sec. I'll be right back. Okay, now the newbie's happy. Yeah, so it doesn't really make sense. Like, if you were going to a town and you have a sleeper cab, you can sleep there, right? So it's a little bit weird that you're so limited in places to sleep in the game and that there's no distinction, at least in terms of game function, between just a regular day cab and a sleeper cab. You'd think, like, it'd be really cool if a, you had a sleeper cab and you could sleep in a lot more places. Now, I know you can't just pull over anywhere, anywhere in the United States and just, like, sleep. I don't think. I Maybe mean, if you're a real truck driver out there, how aggressive can you be 
sleeping in your truck and just like random parking lots and things like that. I suppose, I don't know. I, I would think, I think you have to be smarter about it, right? You have to park in rest areas. You don't want to park in a place that's dangerous and all kinds of things like that too. Now this is our cutoff here. And we're heading up off of Montana, up into the coast to coast mod again. Where is the road here? Is it here? I can't see it. Is this the road? Is that the road? Oh, this is the road. Okay. Sorry. It's hard to see at night. Um, yeah, I mean, how aggressive can you be with a sleeper cab sleeping just anywhere you want to in a truck in the real world? Because then when you go out in the highways in the United States, you go out in the interstates, you know, there's designated rest areas. And at night, they might be packed with trucks. It'd just be a ton of trucks there. This is a really bumpy road here. I hope this isn't going to be the whole way to Canada. This is actually, my wheel is actually vibrating here from the... The, the surface here. This is, uh, I wonder if I need to raise the suspension. I think maybe we're okay. Speed limit 65. Can we go 65 on this thing at this bumpy road? I feel like we're asking for trouble at that speed. But anyway, yeah, it's curious. But I do think it's, a, it's an interesting distinction because you'd think there'd be a little bit more subtlety to it in the game here. Oh, now it's getting better. Good. Okay, that's better. I was going to say five hours of driving on that bumpy stuff would have been a little bit of a, a, a tough drive there. But we're heading now, cutting out this. I do think this is probably coast to coast mod content. And it, although it's still in Montana, we're cutting off of our route. Let me just show you real quick. So we came across Montana here and this little road that turns us off is heading it up, heading us up into the Canadian border and straight up into this uh, little town called Lethbridge. There isn't much there. There's two BHP industries, a UPS and a Walmart. I guess there is a lot there, but sure it looks like a small town, not many roads to explore and things like that. So we'll see. I'm curious to see what the Canadian border looks like. Is there going to be border control or are we just going to be able to, to just drive across it and whatnot? We'll see soon. The road's definitely improved here now, which is a good thing. We'll see as we get to the border. So uh, the speed limit is 65. <laughs> We're on this road. This car is going 20, 20 miles an hour. What the heck, people? Why is the speed limit 20 miles an hour? It's all 20 miles an hour for everybody now. It's kind of weird. 19 miles an hour. Oh, we must be at the Canadian border. Tell me this isn't going to be 19 miles an hour all the way up to, to Lethbridge, is it? Did we just cross into Canada? I, I couldn't see a sign, but it's so dark. I might have missed it here. Is this... Where are we? Yeah, we're in Canada here. Apparently, you can only go 19 miles an hour in Canada. Maybe that's why it's supposed to take 3 hours and 55 minutes. Because the speed limit's 20 miles an hour. Do all Canadians drive 20 miles an hour on the highway? I find this hard to believe. I mean, I know Canada is different, but 19 miles an hour on a road like this? Oh, please. I hope we don't have to drive all this way to Alaska, 20 miles an hour. That would be kind of a bummer here. What's with this? This is strange. There's nobody out here and we can only go 19 miles an hour. I feel like we should pass this car and just floor it. And we could have actually made it to the to Lethbridge then by kind of sleeping. We, we could have made it without sleeping if we could go faster than 19 miles an hour. I'm, okay, I, I, I generally, I'm pretty calm when I play this game, right? And the goal is actually to chill out. However, I will say a 19 mile an hour speed limit on this road with this car going so slow in front of us it is kind of testing my patience here. I do think we need to pass the car. I, I can't take this. Please watch the speed. Yeah, yeah, I know, but your speed limit's insanely low here. I don't care if we're going uphill and passing this car. I feel like it's almost worth it. There's nothing out here. Please Maybe we just floor it and pay the fine. I'm just going to... I, I kind of, the perfect delivery and all that stuff is nice, but 19 miles an hour on this road for like three and a half hours, I'll go insane. We're going to be there in like 30 minutes now, though. I'm just going to floor it. I wonder how much a ticket's going to be if we're like 40 miles an hour over the limit. I guess we'll find out, right? Okay, anyway, we're, we're hammering it here. There are destinations right down the road anyway. There's nothing out here. It's the middle of the night. It's 1130 at night. We're going to camp. Now, here's a car. Oh, that's a car in front of us. That car's probably going 20 miles an hour, too. I just want to make sure there's no cops here. Let's go. We're going. I'm not sure this is, we're supposed to pass in these double lane things, but it's okay. Caution. Please mind the speed. 
sky is not happy with me. <laughs> I'm going 32 miles an hour. This may be a cop car. Nope. That's the only thing I want to watch out for. I want to see if I can avoid the police here, but we're getting there so fast. It was supposed to take three and a half hours, but it, look at the, the clock on the right. If you look on the right hand side, the minutes are just rolling like seconds here. We're going so fast. We could have done this without sleeping easily. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, you learn. Please mind the sweep. This is a corner. We won't pass this guy here. <laughs> there's a lot of traffic coming out of Lethbridge here. Oh my God. There's like hundreds of trucks. We've seen three trucks going northbound. Well, maybe five vehicles and so with. And it's just like this endless stream of vehicles coming out of Lethbridge now. What the heck? There's hundreds of them. Every once in a while, the world does this, right? It's just where it seems to spawn a bazillion trucks or cars going in one direction. Oh my gosh, finally, speed limit, 30 miles an hour. What was with that road? Why? I, I feel like that's a glitch, right? Because they should have fixed that. Some government official putting up crazy speed limits there just to torture people. It's probably a speed trap during the day, but they didn't catch us. Whoops, we're still speeding. Anyway, we're here, Lethbridge, uh, Canada. We made it across. We can't really see much of Canada because it's been here in the dark. Um, it did not take very long at all because of the warped speed limits. And when you're going 40 miles an hour above the speed limit, you make pretty good time. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, here we are, and hopefully we'll get a nice job out of it. That's the question I wonder about too, is can we get a good job out of here heading in the direction we want to go. Now there are four industries here, so I'm hopeful that is going to be helpful. We got 10 hours of sleep. We got plenty of time to sleep and stuff like that. So plenty of sleep energy. So we're doing pretty well here. Now the fun part, we'll get there and we'll get parking. We'll see you in a sec. We are here, 90, oh nice. That doesn't look like it should be that hard. Really, it's on the other side of this big rock pile in front of us. Looks like we should just be able to go over here and I think it's just right there, right? Oh, we've done, I've done this one before too. This is, this one's not too bad. I think we want to go this way maybe. Ideally, I think I wanted to go to the one to the right, but I think we can do it from here. This should work out okay, I think. Once we get this straight, it's our parking spots over there. Yeah, I, oh, I do not like on this sleeper here. I do not like how I can't see the back of the truck here. It certainly makes it harder. Yeah, and we're not going to be close on this. Okay, I'm going to readjust here. I have no idea what I'm doing. I can't see at all. I'm trying to get it straight now. There we go. Let me use, can I go in the bis this way? Yeah, this might work. Got it. That was uh, really tricky, actually, to drop it in here. Uh, and we kind of had to adjust those little cement walls there. But yeah, we're in here. That was a, that was a tricky parking spot. Okay, let's get a ton of money here. We're, we're going to be rich. Um, that was a good long drive there. And what we got, 61 hours it took us. We made it on time, too. That was good. $49,000, dollars we are going to get to level 15? We're 14? No, we get to level 14, though which gives us another skill point here. Let's pick up flammable stuff. That would be good, we'll apply that. And let's take a quick look and see what will be available out of here now. We can see our last route here that we just did, Lethbridge. We started way down in Pittsburgh, Kansas, came all the way up following the yellow line here. Now we're in Lethbridge. Now we want something 
going this way. Houston, Prince George, Dawson Creek. You can go either one of those things because eventually we've got to get up in here. Haynes Junction, White Horse and stuff like that. So let's see if we've got anything good available here. I'm not quite sure what we'll do if we don't. But if we click on this. Okay, lots of stuff coming out of BHP. Nope, we don't want to go that way. We do not want to go to the Caribbean. Oh my God, a 3,000 mile delivery to take the bulldozer back. Probably the same bulldozer. They just got going the wrong way. We don't want to go back to the US. Don't want to go to the US. Don't want to go to the US. Oh, come on, give us something north here. Now that's, that's not helping. That's not helping. That's not the way we want to go. That's definitely not the way we want to go. Oh man, there's nothing here. We might have to drive up to Calgary without anything on it here. Because we're not going to sleep now. I think that's our only thing. We'll have to drive up to Calgary and see if we can get a job out of there. So we'll go cargo list there. I don't see a better way to do this right now. Anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll see you in the next episode. I'll put a link to it as soon as it's ready. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. We're about two-thirds of the way to Alaska now. Making ground. Bye.